country road near Poznan in Poland. The German filmmaker Nadine Clemens is on a mission to discover where World War II began. Today we're going to Czukhov, formerly Schlochau. It's relatively far to the north in Poland, near Tuchlerheide, where German troops invaded Poland on September 1, 1939. Heinz Maronde is helping Nadine Clemens pick up the trail. Seventy years ago, at the age of 18, he was one of the German soldiers who crossed the border here. For me, it's unusual, because I'm coming here to have a closer look at these places again. But nothing seems to jog my memory. It's all so many decades ago. Seventy years have passed since then. Hitler's assault tells how World War II began from the perspective of both Germans and Poles. For soldiers like Heinz Maronde, September 1st, 1939, marked the end of his youth. In my recollection, we boys of 18 or 19 were not really aware that the next phase would be war. On the first day of the war, the Polish town of Wielun, 120 kilometers east of what was Breslau and is now Wrocław, was largely destroyed. The Second World War began here, early that morning. The Polish filmmaker Jan Srekowski views archive material of a squadron of German planes bombing Wielun. People think the start of the war was the Battle of Westerplatte, or they recall the picture of the barrier at the border being pushed aside, or German troops marching into Danzig. I had never heard of Wielun before. Many people in Poland don't know that the war did not begin at Westerplatte, but with the bombing of Wielun, a town that had no strategic importance at all, no military presence, nothing. Wielun was a small and insignificant town, 24 kilometers from the then German border. The survivors of the aerial bombardment were traumatized. Corpses lay about everywhere. When I tried to touch them with a stick, someone told me to stop immediately, because they were Polish soldiers and shouldn't be touched. Günter Zeeling can't forget these images. At the start of the war, he was a photographer with the German army as it invaded Poland. I took photos throughout the entire campaign. Zeeling took more than 2,000 pictures and sent them to his parents, accompanied by enthusiastic reports from the front. Today, the images of destruction and his letters seem alien to him. When I look back to that time, 60 or 70 years ago, I can no longer understand why I wrote all that to my parents. I think it must have been someone else. I must have been a different person back then. For me, that's a significant statement. It shows that the world and people have changed since back then. And I have to say, that makes me glad. Wielun was never completely rebuilt. Several ruins still bear witness to the beginning of the war. Here we are in Chynice, in northern Poland. Nadine Klemens and her film team managed to locate the former German-Polish border fairly precisely. In 1939, this ordinary farmhouse lay in Poland. Its fields were in Germany. This was Polish. The hill marks where Germany began. Suddenly, Heinz Maronde recalled something horrible he experienced here so long ago. That's what's so terrible about war. He was standing there and had been shot through the hand, and he saw shreds of flesh hanging down. It's hard to deal with. Now, 70 years after the beginning of the Second World War, there is, for the first time, a film in which Germans and Poles look at this chapter of history together. 
The documentary Hitler's Assault will be shown on Deutsche Welle TV from Tuesday, September 1st.